I decided I'm going to be a stunt woman. I started getting some jobs in acting. Because I had my entire face, neck, arm. It was all burned in second and third degree burns. We've seen people set free of smoking, alcohol, anorexia, and bulimia. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory to God. God Almighty created you, and He created you to have fellowship with Him. You can't afford to go with somebody else. Nobody else died for you, Mel. Nobody else paid the price for you, you and your silly self. Come on, he went to the cross. He believes in you, Mel. Come on, you got to go with him. You got to go with all your heart and your mind and your soul. And you can't back off. It's going to get tough, but you keep going. You keep going. You keep going. It was just another day for an experienced Hollywood stunt woman. But during a dangerous car stunt, something went horribly wrong. That's all Desiree remembers about that day, when an incredible onset explosion left her fighting for her life. But after only 10 days, she walked out of a Los Angeles burn unit completely healed. And that remarkable miracle has now been captured in her new book, Beyond the Flame, a journey from burning devastation to healing restoration. Today, Desiree, along with her husband, Mel, pastor the growing In His Presence Church in the heart of Hollywood's entertainment industry. And this highly acclaimed book tells the story of that amazing journey. Order your copy of Beyond the Flame today and begin your own journey out of the challenges you face. What are you trusting God for? Physical healing? A financial miracle? Purpose for living? Nothing's too big for God. What He did for Desiree, He'll do for you. Beyond the Flame will encourage you to stand on the promises of God's Word, speak life into your situation, and reach for your miracle. You too can live beyond the flames in your life, and you can start today. We're talking about disciples. Turn to Matthew chapter 28. I love that. You know, there's a difference between a believer and a follower. Okay, that didn't go over well. Uh, let me take it back. No, I'm not taking it back. Last thing Jesus tells us, after he's died for our sins, he's come back for a group of people who have scattered and run away from him and denied him to everybody else at his most important moment in time. He came back to spend 40 more days with them. He was four year, three and a half years with them. And at his most important time where he needed them, they ran away, denied him. So he came back again, rose from the dead. You'd think he would have gone and got some more guys. You know, come on, this crowd's no good. I need, I need to get some guys that are faith. So he comes back and he spends 40 more days with them because he believes in them. Here's the key. They're not perfect. They're definitely flawed individuals. Uh, they crumble under pressure sometimes. They don't do everything right. But I believe in them. And when I send them, I'm going to go with them. And I can cover all their mistakes. And I can cover all their flaws. I'll make up for everything they do wrong. Every time they crumble, I'll grab them again and I'll hold them. And I'll heal them, but I believe in them, and I'm going to go with them. So the key is that I'm going with them. In Matthew 28, it says, go into all the world and make disciples, not just believers, but disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe what I taught you, and I'll go with you till the ends of the age. He's called us to make disciples, not just believers. Part of the program is to win people to Christ, but also to impact their lives and bring transformation to their lives so that they will stand on their feet and they will know Him and they'll go for Him and not just me. Amen. We're called to be disciples. We're called to make disciples. I want to talk to you a little bit about discipleship. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy, chapter 3. It's the last thing that he shared with us before he went to the Father. Go and make disciples. Somebody that would die for us. 
go through all that pain, be separated from his father. His father turned his back on him because of all the sin he took upon himself. If that man, if the last thing he shares with us, you would think it would be powerful and exciting and be life-changing. If he's going to say something at the end, we want to hear it, right? Amen. Say, yes, pastor. Yes. Good, good. I'm glad you agree. No, we ought to take it seriously that he's called us to make disciples. He didn't call us to be successful, even though he wants that. He didn't call us to be awesome, even though he's made us awesome. He's called us to make disciples. He said, if you seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, if you'll just do what I tell you, I'll add all those great things that you're looking for to your life. Amen. So his first priority to us, though, is to make disciples. Is to be a disciple and make disciples. Go into all the world. Explode into the world. Like I've exploded into your life. Like I've impacted your life. Now you go to all the people in your world and explode into their life. And make a difference and bring transformation in their life. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. Know this, in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, obedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Is he living today or back then? <laughs> Having a form of godliness, come on, got a form of religion, carries a Bible. He's talking about... Some, some, some of these are Christians he's talking about. They have a form of godliness. They love religion, but yet they deny God to see into them and have a piece of them. I'll only let you go so far with me. I'll go to church. I'll have a Bible. I'll go to Bible study. But when I leave here, my life is my life. I'm not letting you get too much of me. They have a form of godliness, but... They deny the power of God in their life. Amen. Come on. He's, listen, I'm not a partner with Jesus. He owns me. Do you understand that? I died to myself. It's no longer I that live, but he that liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in the now, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. Amen. We're not partners. He's my Lord. Are you here? Whatever he says goes in my life. So when we leave here, we're still his. Amen. He's still the Lord. He commands our life. He has direction for us. And he said, go into all the world and make disciples. So when I leave here with my big old Bible, I'm going into all the world to make disciples. Because that's what he said. Amen. I don't take my life back when I leave here. I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a follower, not just only a believer. Say I'm a follower. Okay, look at verse 15. From childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Disciples are great followers of Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Say, Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Disciples are great followers of Jesus. He said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Well, the way we follow Him now is we follow the Word of God, who is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God and is God. Amen? Say, the Word of God is Jesus Christ. It's ab the absolute authority of the Bible in our lives, and it's based on our conviction. Listen, the way you get most out of this is that you're totally convicted that this book does, doesn't just contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. This is God speaking to you. It's God breathed. The Holy Spirit has breathed the Lord into our lives. Remember he, when God breathed into Adam in the garden and he became a man? Now we're, he's breathing into us the very life of God as we study the Word of God. Come on, there's a lot of areas of your life that you would say, I didn't really need that. Nothing really happened that year. 
But you wouldn't just get rid of it because it's a part of your story. There's a lot of times we read the Word of God. I, I don't know. I just read it. I didn't get anything. didn't nearly hit me today. But still, it's a part of your life because God's breathing into you. It's going to matter. He's going to use it. But you just don't get it all the time. Are you here today? A disciple loves the Word of God. God wants us to search the Scriptures to find Him. He's the one who loves people throughout all their stuff. You can't love people without this. You judge people without this. Come on, you judge you without it. You know, if you look at yourself long enough, all you'll start seeing is all the negative stuff. And you Listen, you end up like the world going to places trying to fix you. We go to life gurus that just try to fix all the things that are wrong with us. Jesus doesn't do that. He said, I'll go with you. If you'll do what I say, I'll make up for everything that's wrong. Come on, I'll help you. I'll help you grow. I'll heal that place. But without this, we just judge. We just criticize. We find everything wrong. But see, the Lord loves people. When we have the Word of God, we look past all the flaws. We look, if we have the Word of God, we stop carrying signs. That doesn't help me love people. That won't bring anybody in. Listen, I start finding ways into people's lives to tell them about the one who found a way into my life to tell me he loved me. Are you here today? Come on, that's why you need the Word of God. Look at Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Disciples are followers of Jesus Christ the Word of God. Now, now I, I, I want, just want to warn you, your life is going to change today. You're never going to be the same. I'm asking God not to let you sleep until you come to the Word of God and be, fall in love with it. 119, so don't plan on going to sleep today. He answers my prayers. Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Why? I'm born again. I don't know which way to go. Now my old self would just go and try to find a way. But I don't know which way to go. You're my Lord, so for me to get... I need direction from you. I don't know what you're thinking all the time. I don't know how you want me to go. If, if, if you leave me up to me, I'm just going to do something for me. I'm going to find something significant. I'm going to do something that everybody's going to say... Awesome, Mel, way to go. Why? I want to be appreciated. Oh, it's human nature. But I'm born again now. I need to find out which way do you want me to go. And he said, the word of God is a light and a lamp to your next step. Some people in here right now, you need to make decisions. You're at a crossroads. I can go left or right. I can do this or not. This looks right to me. I would do that. But you don't know. You don't know. You need the peace of God. You need to look at both ways and say, which way do I have a peace about? His word will bring a peace to your life. You'll feel, I'm going that way. I'm not afraid. I know, uh, not everybody agrees with me. I'm going that way because I feel peace about that. I've been in the word of God. My conscience bears witness that God is telling me go that way. Are you here today? You need the word of God. It's a light and a lamp unto your path and unto your feet. Well, I don't love him anymore. Knucklehead. Shoot. Just see him. He just sits on the couch, watch TV. Oh, yeah. Was he that way when you married him? No, he wasn't that way. Look what you've done to him. <laughs> Don't leave him now. He should be better for you being in his life. Come on, guys. That's a good chance to say, hey, praise God. Wow. <laughs> no, I don't love. I don't love him, and I don't love her anymore. I'm gonna. The word of God's a light and lamp. Says he'll the word of God tell you, don't do that. It's not greener on the other side. If you find greener grass on the other side, it's because somebody's water bill's higher. <laughs> that they worked on it harder. Come on, they they spent more time in it and made it greener that way. Don't 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 do it. Don't do it because wherever you go, that's where you are. The Bible will say, man, if you'll follow me and be a disciple, I'll go with you and I'll make you a better husband. I'll make you a better wife. 
Come on, I'll help you. I'll challenge those areas in your life. Things will start letting go. Those patterns that you grew up under mom and dad, those ways you, they treated each other, I'll loose those things from your life and you'll be able to live like I want you to live in total victory. But you have to be a disciple. The Word of God is a light and a lamp unto your path. I'm always stunned to find Christians who are spiritually lazy about the Word of God. They're awesome at keeping a great home. They can, they can take four kids to four different games in one day. It's unbelievable. They can multi It's unbelievable what people can do. They can keep a great job. They can earn a great living, be very successful. Five days a week, get on the free. Go all consistent all the time. Watch TV for hours. Be industrious. But they don't read the Word of God. It's the most important thing in your life. You cannot know Jesus Christ ever. You cannot. It is impossible if you don't have a relationship in the Word of God. There is no one. Listen, He doesn't just make Himself known to you by walking around one day and all of a sudden you know Him. That doesn't happen. You might see some great things about God being worked out in life and see God in people's lives. Maybe you felt a little bit of His mercy. You were in a jam and He helped you. But you don't live like that. You have to know Him. So you have to love the Word of God. It's Jesus Christ. Disciples love and follow Jesus Christ. He said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Are you here today? You have to be followers. Don't be spiritually lazy. I was... Um, I had this stalker for four years of my life and she would show up everywhere I was. It was creepy. It was a horrible four years. And I had her, I have her arrested. I'd go to Van Nuys Court. Have you ever been to Van Nuys Courthouse? Oh my gosh, it's the last place you want to sit at all day long. Saw some of y'all there. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> what happened in Van Nuys stays in Van Nuys. <laughs> so, you know, if, a time after time, some of the guys here worked on police force. They'd help me. We'd have her arrested. She'd show up, and we'd have restraining orders. They'd tackle her. They'd put her handcuffs. Police would come. I mean, the whole deal for four years kept going, kept going, kept going. And it was just, it was miserable. I mean, you know, I just, you had to be on the watch wherever you went. And so we finally had her arrested. And, uh, you know, she would, you know, she would send, I got, I got a letter from her for two years every single day. Two years, it came to my house every single day, I got a letter from her. So that means she's writing all the time, you know. People would call me and Facebook me and say, hey, dude, I don't know you, but there's a girl that lives in this apartment building in this halfway house or whatever it is, we, in her room, there's 500 pictures of you on her wall. I'm at a restaurant one day. She's having food there. I didn't know she was there. Some guy comes over to me and he says, hey, Pastor Mel, what? There's some girl here that has a t-shirt on that says, I'm, I'm having Mel Ayers' baby. So this was my life for four years. So finally, we had her arrested again. The judge Gave her 90 days in jail. And when she got out, he was going to sentence her to the penitentiary. Or she could go back home to wherever she lives in another state somewhere. She has to be on her meds and live with her family. And so she took that deal. Now, Facebooking me. I know, I can block her. I'm going to. But we can be together. There's nobody living at the house. It'll just be you and me. I know you love me. I know you want to be all of this, the whole time, all the time, all the time. There's no connection between her and I, but she's so delusional. She thinks something's going on. It's the same way with people that don't love the Word of God. They think something's happening between them and Jesus, but there's no connection. It's not going on. You're going to be wa wandering around out there and nothing. Oh, come on. That's better preaching than your amen. Yeah. 
Don't make A's in life, but drop out when it comes to God's Word. Satan will try to deceive you. He'll have you, you believe in that this book is dull and difficult. It's not. It's, a, it's the greatest love story ever. You, don't, you won't know the love of God to be able to receive it for yourself so you can give it away unless you love the Word of God. There's no other way to know Him. There's no other way to receive it. You'll have in your mind that I know God loves me. You'll have a romantic idea that we're having a relationship. But it won't be there. You can only get it if you have a personal, consistent, strong time in the Word of God all the time. Amen. A man once told me, he said, listen, if you ever, you ever find me in a vegetative state, if I'm in the hospital, I'm in a veg I want you to pull the plug. She went over and pulled the plug on the TV right there. Boom. Come on, you know what's going on. Watch that thing for hours. Be on Facebook for hours. But the one who will make the difference in everything you do, the one whose everything is right here, and disciples, disciples, not just believers, but followers, love the Word of God. Let's spend time in the Word of God. Don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him rip you off. Second thing a disciple does is that disciples major in love forgiveness. They know forgiveness. They know the cross of Jesus Christ. They never forget that they've been forgiven. In fact, it's a huge place in their life that they've been forgiven. You know, some guy was complaining to Jesus. And they had a story, you know, here you got this woman in your life and she's bathing you with her tears and everything. And she's a sinner. She shouldn't even be here. And he asked Simon a question. He said, let me ask you a question. Let's say somebody did something horrific. And then somebody did something that wasn't so bad. And I forgive them both. Who's more thankful? The one that did something horrific. Right? Come on, I've been forgiven. When I'm in the Word of God, the cross becomes real to me. That Jesus died on the cross for me. My, my destination was hell. Totally, eternally in hell without him I didn't find him I didn't look him up I didn't find out what he wanted he came and got me are you hearing me he found me he pursued me I wanted nothing to do with him I didn't care but his love is so amazing that he pursues you and finds you listen to me when you when disciples love the Word of God and they stay cross-focused when you're making a mistake you're doing something wrong stop being worried about it stop being anxious he'll come find you he'll jump right in the middle of it with you and he'll lift you up like it never happened he will turn things around for you you can trust him because he did that finding you and went to the cross for you he'll never stop that I make so many wrong decisions tons of them you don't get to hear about them. I don't brag about them. Well, we tried that. It failed. Shoot that horse and let's get another one. But he jumps in the middle of it with me. And he shines in my life like that never happened. He makes it so good. He turns it around. I trust him that he loves me beyond my inability. And when you are forgiving oriented, a disciple loves to forgive. They remember the cross. And it makes you passionate to go out and love people, not judging them, not criticizing them. Why? Because you've already received the kind of love that doesn't... Huh? I felt like T.D. Jakes there. Wow. He doesn't focus on all my problems. I don't focus on other people's stuff. I want to tell them about somebody who loves them, wants to be in their life, that will save them, forgive them of everything, and jump right in the middle of their life and shine for them and pick them up out of the muck and the mire. Why? Because he went to the cross for me. Amen. Amen. Disciples never forget that. Never forget that. They don't have a passing glance at the cross. They have a passionate cry about the cross. Come on, how many he forgave? Come on, lift your hand. Just hold it up for a second. 
Just hold it up for a second. We can't possibly be on the right track if he did this for us and there's no boldness in our life to tell other people. Come on, keep your hand up. I'm just going to be honest with you and straightforward. Y'all didn't come here to hear a poem. You, heard, you came here to, for somebody to help. We can't possibly, if our life does not allow for, if we're having to squeeze him in to our life and our life is not built around that we are thankful and grateful, then we have forgot and we do not understand that we were headed for hell and now we have heaven. Come on, when we keep an eye on that, we'll be passionate about going out and telling them. There'll be a boldness in our life. There'll be a change to our attitude and the way we feel. Am I lying or am I dying? Come on, come on, give God a praise today. Just tell him, yes, that's true. Tell him, that's true, Lord. That's true, Lord. Just say it, that's true, Lord. He said it, it's true. Now, he said it and it's true. But I need your help because, man, this thing comes over me like before I know it. I'm busy and I'm thinking about myself and selfishness and selflessness takes over my life. And all I can think about is my life. I know you told me to seek first the kingdom and everything will be added unto me. But I still have a need to control everything to make sure it will be added unto me. Come on, somebody. It's true. I know it. I'm there with you. But I don't feel right if I'm like that. I know it's wrong. I know you're wrong, Mel. Come on, you got to be kidding after all he did for you. Listen, this world is going to pass away. Then what will you have, Mel? You're just getting busy for the world. If you were with God, if you were a disciple, people would be coming to Christ. You would explode into their life like he's exploded into yours. There would be fruit in your life that says you remember the cross. Come on, you know it. I'm there with you. I'm not condemning you. What I'm saying is that if you stay in this book, you'll stay cross-centered. You need other people around you that are cross-centered. That remember and are thankful and they're grateful that he's so faithful. Come on, you need three or four people around you. Get into a group here. Find them. Meet once a week. Talk about things that are important. The cross, about winning your region, about winning the nation. Talk about, man, I'm, I, 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 just get, I just get so busy. Okay, let's pray over that so God will break that busyness off of you. Come on, there are patterns that you learn from the out workaholics and people who are aholics in your life over different areas. God will break those. He'll set you free of those. He'll get you that you don't worry. You're not anxious. You're not, you don't worry about anything. I'm not going to worry about money. I'm not going to worry about my job. I'm going to do what God's called me to do and be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Being cross-focused, it gives us passion. Look at Mark 8. It gives us passion for the lost. Mark 8. Are you with me today? I'm telling you about the thing that's going to make the difference in your life. When you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you and your husband or you and your wife are in agreement that this will be our key, you'll have the best marriage anybody could have. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever. Why? Jesus goes with you. I'll go with you till the ends of the age. I'll be with you. When Des and I first started, listen, she, there were projectiles flying in my house that would go around corners and find me like a boomerang. She was throwing stuff at me. Oh, my gosh. We were never going to make it. Ever, ever. Forget about it. Just, oh, Lord Jesus, please help me. Stay alive one more day. If 48 hours would have been on TV back then, I might never have made it. I might have just run for the hills. Oh yeah, the first year was awful, horrible. I, I loved her, but I didn't know how to live with her. I didn't know how to overcome my rudeness, my pride. Every, she didn't know how to know, overcome her wrath, the things she saw growing up, all the stuff that she learned. and she. How do, you, how, do you, how do you overcome that? You can't overcome that just because you fall in love with somebody. He brings the change. If you're a disciple, amen, amen. There's no other way to do it. You can go to all the doctors you want, all the marriage counselors in the world. If they're not telling you what the Bible says, it ain't going to help you. Right. 
So we, we just started being disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We didn't know that he was going to go with us and he's going to help us in our marriage. We didn't know he's going to change us from the inside out and that we we're going to start loving each other with the same love he loved us with. We didn't know that, but he, what we did 31 years later, here we are in love, great marriage, great life, great church. Come on, our life went higher. We soared higher than, listen, I was a bad actor. She was a stunt woman. We couldn't pay our bills. I couldn't provide for my family, but I became a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I went with him, I know it now. I understand it now. I can teach it now. I didn't know it then, but it didn't matter that I didn't know it. He did it anyway. As I became a disciple, sharing my faith, going out into the world, telling about the love of Christ, all of a sudden, Jesus with us started transforming our marriage. He didn't just influence me, he transformed me. He made me brand new. So whatever you're at right now, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing right now, you become a disciple. Make it your priority. Jesus goes with you. You begin to soar in every area. Every area that he's called you to, to be successful and productive and impacting, all of a sudden, he gets involved with it and the light of God just starts moving through you. I'm giving you the key to wholeness and fullness in life is being a disciple, making disciples. What did I tell you to turn to? Mark 8, are you there? Okay. Verse 34. When he had called the people to himself, with his disciples, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up your cross, follow me. Put the life that you had thought about down and know that I have something better for you. Take up your cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? What will a man give in exchange for his own soul? Disciples are willing to sacrifice something physical for something spiritual. They're willing to be persecuted. They're willing to go out and make disciples. They understand that not everybody will believe in them, that there'll be persecution that there are people that reject them. But they're willing to sacrifice their physical body for their soul. They said the most important thing is I don't lose my soul. Amen. The way I think, how I feel, how I love Jesus back. You know, Jesus died on the cross for you and I, and he tells us to take up our cross and follow him. It's not an equal exchange. We don't take up our cross and follow him, and it's the same as him dying for us. Come on. But when we take up our cross and follow him, it's how we love him back. When he died on the cross, it's because I needed saving. I needed healing. I needed mercy. I needed grace. He showed me he loved me and gave me all those things. He doesn't need healing. He doesn't need saving. He doesn't need any mercy, and he doesn't need any grace. So how can I love him back? How possibly can I love him back? He needs nothing from me. How do I love you back, Lord? By going out and showing the same love to the people he died for and cares about. Amen. Amen. That's how we love him back. We can sing the songs. I can come preach every Sunday. You can come to church every Sunday. Doesn't mean we love him. Doesn't mean it. Love is action. Love costs you something. There's a sacrifice to make being a disciple. Amen. You have to stand your ground. Some people will be mad at you. You'll lose relationships that won't want to be around you anymore. Come on. He lost his father. His father turned his back on him after what he went through for you and I. Disciples are strong and bold. We understand that it will cost us something, but we don't put down our cross. Why? Remember the people that said Jesus told him while he was on the cross, you're a healer. Come down off the cross. Heal yourself. How many remember that somebody shouted, come down off the cross? If he would have come down off the cross, he would have aborted his mission. We would be lost forever. Right? But we can't put our cross down because it gets tough. No, because people's souls are hanging in the balance. The people he loves and died for, he's believing that we're going to love him back by going after them. 
I'm not getting a whole lot of amens. It doesn't matter what it costs us. It doesn't matter the persecution. It doesn't matter there's a conflict. We have someone with us that's never lost a battle. He's the captain of our salvation. I trust in him, but I don't back off and drop the cross I'm carrying for him because it gets difficult. In fact, let me tell you, it's what I'm looking for. If I love him and I'm standing for him, going for him, there will be conflict. If there is no conflict, who am I standing with? Who am I standing for? If I'm not having any conflict, I must not be saying anything. Ah, yeah, come on. No, I'm going to go over here. Yeah. Y'all feel me? I can't afford to face the one who died for me, who went to the cross beaten unrecognizably, tortured and tormented and mocked and shamed. I can't afford to face him one day and tell him I picked Easy Street. No, no, no. There should be a little conflict going on. I don't purposely conflict with people. But I know there's two kingdoms that are at war. Amen. But you know what we do as humans? We find easy street. That's what we do. And so we, we go to church and we buy bigger Bibles. Come on. They're bigger so people can see them. We dress better. We do whatever it takes to be religious enough to think that it qualifies us. But I'm telling you, he's looking for disciples. He's coming back for disciples. Amen. Come on, who's going to go with him? I think we all, come on, you, gotta, you just got to know. You got to know. You got to tell yourself, you're no longer living like this. You're going with him. You're going to go with him, Mel. You're going to go with him. You can't afford to go with somebody else. Nobody else died for you, Mel. Nobody else paid the price for you, you and your silly self. Come on, he went to the cross. He believes in you, Mel. Come on, you got to go with him. you got to go with all your heart and your mind and your soul. And you can't back off. It's going to get tough, but you keep going. You keep going. You keep going. Oh, come on. Come on, that's our God. He believes in me. He believes in us. I know it gets tough. It should get tough. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man brings a snare. The fear of man. The fear of losing the world. My reputation. My cool. My, my, my circle of friends. This is Hollywood. This is L.A. He said, if you fear man, if you want the praises of man, it's a snare to your soul. You ought to find out what pleases God. Are you here? Find out what pleases the Lord. A religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, suffers nothing, is worth nothing. If it doesn't cost you anything, doesn't offer you anything, it's worth nothing. It's not worth living. Christianity must mean everything to us before it can mean anything to anyone else. Martin Luther said salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you your life. The only ultimate disaster that can befall us is to feel ourselves at home on the earth. Are you here? This is not my home. All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this me, Jesus. This is not where I... Come on, sing it one more time. All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. 
Take this and give me Jesus. Amen. Amen. We can't feel at home yet. We're just passing through. We're sojourners. We cannot drop our cross and leave the mission behind. You're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not a retread. You're born again. You're a brand new person. You have a new mission. He knows your life. He created you. He's well aware of your desires. He knows everything you want to do and all the giftings and talents in you. He made it. He can bring it together like you can't. And he said, seek first the kingdom. Go into all the world. Make disciples. Be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let that be your identity. It's not something you do. It's who you are. I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm his disciple. He, he rescued me. He ransomed me with his life. I would have been alienated from God for the rest of eternity. But he came and got me. Now I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't like your job. You don't like where you are. People are mistreating you. Nobody understands you. You're being abused by people. Can't find any friends. I mean, run it down. Find everything that's wrong. And I'm telling you, he's the answer for everything. He's the answer for everything. If you'll make a stand today and become a disciple of Jesus Christ, he'll enter into every area that is displeasing to you, that hurts you, because Jesus is a healing God. The healer will come. And he has the answers and the power to take care of every situation that brings emptiness and sadness and sorrow in your life. He will enter in. But listen, he said he's going with disciples. Lo, Los Angeles, yo, I'm going with you. I'll go with you to the ends of the age. Make disciples, I'll go with you. Make disciples, I'll go with you. Sometimes the world's need is so great, we feel overwhelmed. What can we do that will impact the world for the cause of Christ? Pastors Mel and Desiree Ayers and the team at In His Presence have created a global ministry outreach. Through accountability and tracking real-time ministry results, we've developed opportunities that will allow your giving to make a real difference. From planting new churches and supporting ministry leaders to preaching the gospel to the Muslim world and fighting sex trafficking. You'll know that every dollar you give to this program is changing lives for the better. Pick up the phone right now or visit us on the web and send a gift of any size today. That simple action will begin a process that will reach around the globe. In today's world of competing voices, this is a place where your financial giving is reaping an incredible harvest. The clock is ticking, so call, write, or go online today. If you've ever experienced an eating disorder or know someone who has, then you understand the shame, the humiliation, and the fear. Millions of men and women today are literally held in bondage to this crippling problem with no answer in sight. But now, one woman has broken through the lies of the diet industry and dared to tell the truth. Desiree Ayers was a successful Hollywood actress and professional stunt woman. She was at the top of her field and yet hid the secret of anorexia and bulimia for years. In her remarkable book, God Hunger, Desiree Ayers exposes the lies and dares to speak the truth. Order online at GodHunger.com. If you or a loved one suffers from an eating disorder, then don't wait. God Hunger. Finally, hope is here.